again, welcome to day three of the EK Expo straight from our Computex booth. Probably the coolest place to be in the heart of subtropical Taipei. My name is Anna and let's move along and speak to EK's lead R&D designer, Joe Robbie. I'm joined here by a matching pair of Derek die builds. The Intel Core Edition is seen in the beautiful Inwin F5, and the AMD Ryzen Edition is seen in the Inwin Jubilee. If you want to check more on the specifics of these blocks, then let's go and take a closer look in the studio. Hello and welcome back to another Direct Die product showcase. And this time it's the latest offering for LGA 1700. This is the Direct Die Core Edition that was optimized specifically for the 14th gen Intel CPUs. It's still backwards compatible with 12th and 13th gen, uh, but due to the bigger die, the fins have been extended and uh, everything's been adjusted internally. The biggest changes from our original direct die product are the mounting mechanism, the die guard, and how they fit up to the cold plate. Uh, so the interference you get when you mount it on the motherboard and how we limit uh, the bending of the PCB, uh, how we limit the force on the CPU itself. So we'll take it apart, have a look at every piece and show you around the outside. At this time, there is just one version of this block available, which includes everything you need to mount it, but not the parts required to delid your CPU, since so many people already have uh, the delid tool that we produced, and it's still available separately in the shop if you need it. So the block itself includes, of course, uh, the cold plate, the full assembly of the block, a backplate with a die guard that is specific to uh, delidded LGA 1700 CPUs, and it also includes Thermal Grizzly Conductonaut Liquid Metal, uh, which inside it has uh, the alcohol wipe for cleaning and the cotton bud for applying and spreading the liquid metal. So everything you need to make one application. It also has all of the required mounting tools, uh, the T7 Torx key for the standoffs, as well as a two and a half and two millimeter Allen key to service and take apart the block. And lastly, included in there is still the protective insulation for 12th and 13th gen CPUs. That's in the form of a little plastic sheet and uh, a small foam which is adhered to it. And you can stick that on your PCB to prevent any uh, liquid metal escaping from the die and going into the tiny capacitors that surround the chip. 14th gens, because of the bigger die, don't need this part, it won't fit, and there is nothing to protect, so there's no need to install it for the 14th gen CPUs. Taking a look at the outside of the block, we can see a distinctive aluminum design that was inspired by the Intel coolers uh, and Intel design language. Um, there's a very large light guide uh, that's made from white acetal uh, that spreads the light evenly so you can make uh, a solid color there or um, it's uh, an addressable DRGB strip so you can have uh, rainbows there. And the internals of the block are still plexi so the light will both emanate from the acetal and fade into the block, light up your coolant uh, and anything that will be seen in between the aluminium. Uh, the aluminium is a single solid piece that encloses four sides of the block. Uh, there are openings in the front and the right side of the block, you can see the exposed white acetal light guide. The materials exposed to the coolant are all copper, stainless steel, and the brass of the fittings. So the first part that we'll remove are the fittings. And these are actually standard torque micro fittings that are supplied with the block. They're in black to match the aluminum, but you could exchange them for any other torque micro extender fitting or even torque micro HDP and HDC fittings if you wanted to put the tubing directly inside. Now from the back side, we'll remove the mounting backplate with a T7 key. 
And so one difference that is immediately obvious from the backside is the absence of the thumb screws on the back plate. Instead, it's just a solid aluminum piece with the threads inside. Instead of the nut on the back plate rotating, the screw that goes through the spring uh, actually rotates inside the block. And this was done so that you can remove them uh, if there's any damage to the Torx key, if you want to exchange the spring, if there's any reason to take them out, uh, they can be serviced and I believe a spare is supplied inside the kit. So they can be removed, the spring can come out, the mounting screw can come out and everything can be exchanged without disassembling the block. Next, we will remove the cold plate. Uh, the cold plate also has a significant amount of changes from the original version. So you can now see there is a contact patch that is the exact size of the die. Um, that helps us achieve a, a better finish uh, and better flatness on that area in particular. Uh, it's also slightly thicker to improve how the heat spreads in that region. Uh, but one other really practical uh, reason behind doing this was you have a very clear area to spread the liquid metal. Uh, so when you're applying it to both the die and the cold plate, you know that you can just spread it out to the extent of the uh, contact surface for the die. And on the inside, we can now see that the fin array in the cold plate is slightly offset towards the top of the block. And that's because uh, the die on the 14th gen CPUs is also offset towards the top of the PCB. It has a corresponding uh, revision to the jet, which also moves it up significantly and the orifice for uh, the coolant inlet also aligns perfectly with the fins. Uh, you'll also notice this is asymmetrical and it has the bump only on one side, so there's only one direction that it can fit, or one orientation, and it should be fitted with the round side facing down. Um, so that round side effectively makes uh, a Venturi at the end of each slot. Um, the end of the slot is radius and the end of the jet plate is radius with a slightly tighter radius. So the coolant expands and slows down as it leaves the block, uh, helping to reduce the restriction. So with the four largest screws for the cold plate removed, I can now change to a two millimeter hexagon for everything else on the block. Uh, these are using different screw lengths and that's why there are different sizes, so you can't mix them up. The next two screws hold on the cover. So now we can separate the aesthetic cover from the block and you can see the inside of the machining and how this is assembled with the light guide. Uh, there's one screw underneath the badge that holds the light guide into the block. And with this screw removed, you can remove the light guide and remove the small piece that the badge is mounted to. If you wanted to reverse which way you've installed this block, uh, because you have maybe an inverted case, uh, you can return that in the opposite position and put the light guide back to reverse the branding on the block. Otherwise, it can't be installed upside down because the location of the die corresponds to the locations in the die guard and of course the cold plate and the jet plate. So you can't install the entire block upside down, but you can rotate which way the badge is installed by 180 degrees. Um, the badge is mounted on its own piece of white acetal, which diffuses light through the whole thing and through the letters of the badge. Uh, the light guide itself, as mentioned earlier, is also white acetal. This is a machine piece and disperses the light very evenly. And of course, the biggest piece of this block is the aluminium cover. Uh, this is 6082 aluminium and it's anodized in black. And now back to the block, which has 
a very simple construction of a plexi top and a stainless steel mid plate. This can be removed with five screws that are the same size as all the other M3 screws so you don't have to worry about mixing anything up. And that's the last screw removed. It's worth noting that all of these screws are stainless steel, so they won't rust and are exceptionally hard. And now we can remove the mid plate, which is specific for this block, so that it fits inside the aluminium. And now we can also remove the LED strip, which is a dense strip with 10 diodes inside. And that leaves us with just the O-rings. There are two small ones and one large shaped one. Uh, so now we can see the O-rings, which are permanently molded into the correct shape for easy installation. And lastly, the plexi top. Uh, the plexi top is machined on practically all sides except the faces which remain polished. Uh, and they stick out through the aluminium or the, the visible spaces inside the block. Uh, everything else is machined practically. You can see here the space where the LED fits and there's actually uh, room for the cable to exit in either direction. So if you want to rearrange this and have the cable exit at the top instead of the bottom, uh, you can just flip that around and you can also see the flow path of the block. So the Inlet port is at the bottom, it wraps around and enters directly onto the dies in the center and then there are two outlet cavities on either side uh, that return up together to the outlet port and this layout helps us to make the block bleed much easier and it's also unified with the Matrix 7 system that all of our distro plates feed coolant from below and return it above. So there we have it, our latest Core Edition Direct Eye Block. If you're intrigued about the performance, uh, please come back and check our video, which we'll be publishing very soon, where we pit this against a regular custom loop, a Direct Eye AIO, and of course, a conventional AIO, so we can see the full rundown of our thermal solutions for LGA 1700. I will be doing that with a 14900 KS. And unsurprisingly, this is the best. So, thanks for stopping by and see you again soon when we have a new product. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more. One last DK Expo episode awaits you tomorrow. Same time, same place, but a whole new different set of liquid cooling solutions. Don't miss it. <laughs>